Welcome back to another Medieval Monday. For those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Blythe and I am the Education Officer at Dundonald Castle. Now this week we're going to be bringing you another helmet themed video and this one is about a helmet that I think a lot of people will recognize, the Great Helm. in the period of the Norman invasion, so about 950 years ago, were generally smaller, more rounded, and they sometimes had a piece on the front to protect the face called a nasal. Now, this is one that is in the castle's collections and is very appropriately called the nasal helmet. Throughout the 12th century, helmet fashion changed pretty rapidly. The shape of the helmet flattening out like the top of our great helm and the nasal becoming less and less common. And around the start of the 13th century, so about 800 years ago, armorers had begun attaching metal plates to the front of a helmet so that it would protect the entire face. Now these plates had various punctures in them and slits across the front of the helmet so that the wearer could both see and breathe while wearing the helmet. And this new form of full protection helmet, as you may imagine, came to be known as the Great Helm. So what's it made of? Well, like plate mail and the pig face basin that we talked about a few weeks ago, the Great Helm would have been made of steel, melted down and hammered into shape and then riveted together. Some decoration may have been added using, using mixtures of different types of metals, like you see here in the cross shape on the face of our helmet, which is likely mixed with brass. Some helmets used more light, more lavish methods of design, including using gold and silver leaf on top of the helmet. So what does it weigh? Well, not surprisingly, this helmet is pretty heavy. It's definitely the heaviest in our collection, given the sheer amount of metal that was used to produce it. Now, the helmet itself weighs about 7.2 pounds or nearly 3.3 kilos, which is roughly the same as the chainmail coif from a few weeks ago, which extended down to cover the shoulders as well. So who would have used it? Well, these helmets required a significant amount of smooth metal. And they were also accompanied usually by some type of decoration like you see here, meaning that there was more skill and time required to make them. And therefore they would have been a lot more expensive. So these would have been more for the elite, a lot like the pig face bassinet that we saw a few weeks ago. Only the rich and the elite are gonna have helmets like this. While the idea of a great helm, so one helmet that protected the entire skull and often part of the neck, remained pretty consistent among helmets of this type, the decoration varied pretty widely. So our great helm is nearly flat on the top. It has a gold looking plated cross adorning the face. As we said earlier, this was likely made of brass or a brass mixture. And it has pretty simple air holes. Apart from this one, they're just little dots, really simple air holes. Now, some other ones that were similar to this might have had a more rounded top. See how ours is pretty flat. They might have more decorative air holes, some more pretty shapes. And it was really, really common to have cross shaped air holes on these as well, which I'll show you a picture of here. Now, some of them, like the bassinets that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, might have even had chain mail attached to them and coming down to protect the shoulders. Now, many helmets saw more fashionable bands across the center like this. Some were actually golden in color, like we talked about gold plated. Some were plain steel, but had more decoration. And like I said before, many had more decorative air holes than this one does. Like all of the pieces we've talked about, the Great Helm has a shelf life. It has a period of time where it was really popular and then we start to see it fall away. So by the end of the 14th century, so that's about 200 years after the Great Helm initially became popular, we really see it replaced by other style. 
Around that time, they began to be replaced with more shaped helmets and more adaptable helmets, like that pig face bassinet that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, which became popular in the 14th century. Versions of the great helm started to spring off, so versions with a visor like the pig face bassinet that we saw, or versions with only a visor and no back, so it was slightly easier to move in them. By the end of the 14th century, 600 years ago, a more sculpted style of the Great Helm had become popular. Now this style had a curved lower piece and they called it a frog mouth. And I'll include a link to read about this type of helm in the comments. It's a little bit later than our period, but it's still really, really interesting. So that's about all I have about our great helm. Thank you so much to everybody for watching. As usual, I will put some links in the comments below for you to read a little bit more about helmet development and style, and specifically about the development of the great helm. And if you enjoyed this video and want us to keep making more, please consider going to Donald Castle's website or our Facebook page and making a small donation to the education team so that we can continue to bring these to you while we're not on site. Thanks so much.